I'm a journalist uh, covering technology and uh, innovation. I also wrote some books in Italian about social media, privacy, content decoration, and, and the likes. I'm interested in the way uh, technology shapes uh, society. The fact that it's called a um, digital cold war has been frequently used lately uh, because, of course, of the perceived similarity of the current situation with the previous century confrontation between the US and the Soviet Union. In this case, uh, this is mainly now referred to the confrontation between uh, the US and China uh, on the, in the technology sector for the supremacy in uh, advancements in uh, the latest te technology. Lately, there was an escalation of this competition to reach uh, technological supremacy in a number of fields, uh, such as uh, artificial intelligence, uh, 5G uh, and, and robotics uh, sectors. Uh, the US have been the main uh, player in this uh, by far for, for many, many years. But lately, uh, China has been uh, catching up in some of these fields especially under the um, Trump administration, the US, there has been a uh, ramping up of the measures to uh, stop uh, or to make it more difficult for some Chinese companies to enter uh, the US market or to uh, make business with the uh, allies of the United States. One of the issues, especially with, uh, with smartphones, uh, is that, that you don't have a way to, to understand what's going on uh, under the hood. They make money gathering data about you and selling it on the data market. So the way you control data, uh, it's very, very important, both on the personal uh, level of the individual and uh, on the level of uh, businesses. Before the pandemic, uh, especially in uh, Western society, especially there was this kind of um, tech lash that people were becoming more weary of uh, surveillance from big tech companies. With the pandemic, of course, it was uh, going back to digital. From the point of view of the personal data, or data uh, generated by the individuals, there, uh, in many parts of the world, there are not a lot of protections. It's a bit different now in the European Union after uh, the approval of the General Data Protection Regulation, which is also uh, provided a, a model for inspiration uh, in, in other countries because it sets some limits to companies uh, obtain data, store this data and uh, use it, and also um, provide some um, means to enforce uh, sanctions if they do not comply. In general, there is a growing awareness of the importance, uh, both from the economic point of view and the point of view of the society, of the data that's been generated online. One of the issues is that there are a few companies, some in the US and some in uh, China, that really uh, are dominated the landscape uh, of the online platforms. And these all that platforms collect huge quantities of data. To regulate uh, uh, this field, uh, it's not that easy because you have to make uh, deals, agreements, make uh, put everyone on, on the same page, uh, governments, companies, uh, individuals, uh, civil society associations. We have some um, attempts at global regulations, like the Charter for uh, Human Rights uh, on the, and the Internet Principles uh, some years ago, but they lack the, the means and uh, to enforce uh, and to uh, um, implement sanctions for those that do not comply. This is a decentralized approach, which also could be more respectful of, of, the, of privacy and, and also make the, the web more resilient to censorship and uh, control from a uh, few platforms. But uh, of course, this is still very early stage and um, we don't know if they will succeed. 